much bearer hopeful of the new patriotic party, Dr. Oswefi Yakoto, says Ghana must focus on other tree crops other than cocoa in a drive to develop the country's agricultural sector. He says cocoa earns the country 1.5 billion annually, but other tree crops like rubber can earn Ghana more than that amount. He, must, he says we must be deliberate about it, and that's why the Tree Crop Development Authority is an important player in this. According to him, the potential of the Tree Crop Development Authority holds, uh, the, in, in developing agriculture is one that we cannot gross over. He says they hold the power to ensure Ghana does not borrow to finance its development again. He has been speaking to the media in the wake of the World Bank's injection of some $200 million into the tree crop diversification project. The International Development Association of the World Bank extended some $200 million uh, financing through modernizing agriculture to accelerate productivity, resilience, and industrialization. First of all, you all know that the flagship program, Planting for Food and Jobs, was a major <clears throat> intervention by the Akufuado government in transforming the economy of Ghana by promoting productivity in agriculture and specifically targeting farmers. Farmers who are mainly smallholders operating three, four acres, or five acres of land at any one moment, uh, having been given the opportunity to prove themselves until this government came with the planting for food and jobs. Unfortunately, planting for food and jobs has five components, what we call modules. But it's only one module which has taken center stage. Of course, I can understand because it's to do with our stomachs. There's a food crop component of planting for food and jobs. There are other components which are equally important to transform agriculture in Ghana. And these include the tree, uh, what we used to call the planting for export and rural development, which targeted six crops for development tree crops to the level of cocoa. Cocoa has been uh, the mainstay of this economy for over 130 years now. And in spite of the fact that in 1922, the governor of the Gold Coast, Gordon Gagesbeck, made the observation that the Gold Coast was producing 60% of global output of cocoa, that it was time we turn our resource, our attention to other tree crops uh, like rubber and others. Since then, every government which comes into, uh, uh, into uh, uh, to govern has had this lip service of diversification, but it's never happened until the arrival of the Kufuata government. And under, that, and under this government, we launched the planting for food and jobs, the five modules by the president of the Republic, Nanado Danko Kufuato in various parts of this country. The component which I am talking about today is what uh, planting for export and rural development, which I piloted through the ministry's own uh, uh, personnel to come up with a document for submission to the cabinet of the Republic, which was eventually approved and sent on to the Parliament of Ghana. And in September 2019, was approved as an act. Uh, they passed, uh, the Parliament passed an act, 1010, uh, for, in 2019, for the uh, uh, formation, the creation of this authority. I want to remind you that since 1947, with the creation of Ghana Cocoa Board, there has not been one single commodity institution created since then. And you, one will be wondering why, because you have crops with today, the value is much higher than cocoa, and yet we are, we are stuck with cocoa, with the potential of other tree crops. So the idea about the Tree Crop Development Authority is to shepherd these six potential crops, cashew, uh, shea, mango, coconut, oil palm, and, and um, rubber to be able, each of them, to develop and earn Ghana as much as cocoa is earning Ghana today. At the, at the moment, Ghana is earning about one and a half billion US dollars from cocoa.
these other crops have the potential to earn Ghana even more, two, three billion dollars. And we have to go to Cote d'Ivoire to see exactly what I mean by that. So having created the authority in parliament, the president of the Republic in August 2020 inaugurated the board and the management of this uh, tree crop development authority in Kumasi where it's headquartered. And the feasibility study which uh, was submitted through parliament was that it needed a seed fund of only $50 million for the first three years. Just $5 million each year for the first three years. And that, will, that was it. It, it will be able to borrow on its own uh, 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 profitability and, and so on and would not be part of the budget of the Republic of Ghana. Just like cocoa board uh, operations do not come into the budget. They will be able to go to, uh, to, to the bank to raise their monies, whether locally or, or, or overseas or a combination of the two. So this authority was created. Now to get it off the ground for the first, this is the third year of the operation. You ask me how much money has been disbursed to the authority. Of the, by now, we should have, the, the government should have disbursed $15 million. But as we speak, it's only $3 million. And means that every, the vision of contributing to the future of the economy of this country was being held back. So I entered into discussions with the, uh, uh, Mr. Pierre Laporte, who is the country representative of uh, the World Bank, and uh, submitted the, the project and its, uh, all its uh, aspects to, to, to that organization. And they saw that there's something to be said, in fact, for supporting the Tree Crop Development Authority. So they took it up and we have, we have gone through the system. Of course, by the time the approval came uh, uh, this month, I had left the organization. But I'm so pleased to see that that vision is now very, very feasible because it has the potential of earning this country anything up to $12 billion after six, seven years of implementation. And you only have to go across the border to Cote d'Ivoire to see what is happening. The same five crops are giving Cote d'Ivoire seven, eight billion dollars every year. Whilst the five crops, including cocoa in Ghana, is earning less than two billion dollars. So the potential is huge for this organization to contribute to financing our development. For the last, uh, 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 since independence, we've been to the IMF 17 times. This is the 17th time that we are just coming out of the negotiations and approval uh, systems. And it's, it's very simple. We've been financing our development through debt, borrowing locally and externally, externally to support our development. And in spite of the fact that we are paying interest and the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the capital that we borrow, we are not generating enough revenue from these borrowings to be able to service the debt and also pay back the, the, the principals. And hence, every three, four years, we fall down. We fall down because we go back to the borrowing market, to the debt markets, borrow euro bond, uh, bilateral, local, uh, treasury bills, and so on to develop. And no country can develop with that kind of uh, strategy. So if it hasn't been working, financing our development with debt, then we have to look inside to see what resources we can generate. And of course, those resources are just below the soil. That is the, all we have. We've been mining gold for over 100 years in Obuasi. Ghana is now the biggest, uh, for some years now, the biggest producer of gold in Africa. And yet we are in the clutches of the IMF. President Kufo's time, we discovered oil. And we thought all our problems would be solved and our financing will come from oil. What do we see? Oil production has actually been dropping in the last few years. So we are not getting much. But then my experience in the six years at the ministry shows me that working with Ghanaian farmers, and don't forget, I have been in the international system
for 18 years before I came back to Ghana, working with all kinds of government in Asia, South America, in Europe, and so on. I realized that the Ghanaian farmer, with a little push, with little persuasion, can really perform. So we believe that if Ghana, Ghanaian farmer is given the full support, they can help generate the foreign exchange that we need through this uh, crop uh, tree crop development authority, and also through our traditional food crops like maize, rice, and the others. People tend, those who are criticizing planting for food and just, oh, we are importing. There's no country in the world who doesn't import. America imports, Russia imports, China imports. But it's the quantities, the proportions that they import that makes a difference. So in, in actual fact, we've been exporting maize and others and the planting for food and jobs, the food crop component of it, informally, the informal trade between us and our neighbors. Uh, when we did a calculation at the ministry at the time I was there, amounted to something like $100 million of, uh, in 2021, uh, to be specific, of informal trade, the amount of uh, grains that uh, uh, we take across our borders to our neighbors, Burkina Faso, Mali, uh, Niger, Nigeria, uh, Togo, Benin, and others. So there is a huge potential there for us to end foreign exchange if we are able to increase our productivity of these smallholders and so on. Um, uh, there's this fanciful idea that smallholders uh, cannot deliver. They've delivered a global industry like cocoa for Ghana for 100 years. So why do you think they cannot do the same for the others if you support them? And planting for food and jobs, my lesson from it is that in addition to the tree crop of cocoa, which we are not, uh, hopefully with this new financing will diversify into other crops so we can earn more foreign exchange in order that we can use the additional foreign exchange to finance our industrialization, our education, our health, our infrastructure, roads, uh, uh, motorways, uh, uh, farm roads, and all of those things. That we have that potential to be able to do that if we support farmers. So I'm glad to see that even having left office for about six months, a lot of these initiatives that I, I took are coming into fruition. In addition to that, there's, uh, I left in my office the Horticultural Development Authority and then the Poultry Development Authority. These two were in the pipeline, and I'm hoping that uh, they will come into, uh, eventually travel through the system to go to Parliament for the creation of these institutions, which will then drive the development of the various subsectors of agriculture to transform this country into a, a country, a first world country, by generating more than enough foreign exchange and local uh, revenue to fund our development uh, for the future. So that's the vision I have for the nation Ghana, that through this path, through the agricultural path, through the path of farmers of Ghana, this country can be transformed into a, a land of prosperity for all of us. You know when you can be launched, the, the government wants a one day, one, one, one day, yeah. one day, yes. which was to make water available to the yes. farmers because during the dry season it's difficult. So, yes. so I, was, I was asking that a plan to ensure that we, we create a system where even in the dry seasons, our farmers can still... Yes, but you see, that is, is like um, buying a VW compared to buying a Mercedes-Benz. Irrigation is like Mercedes. If you get a truck truck from Adina to the ministry, it will get you to your office. Somebody will also come from Adina to, um, to the office in the ministry in a Mercedes-Benz. It depends upon affordability. You talk about irrigation, it's very expensive. We're talking about billions of dollars equivalent, if we really have to. The Pualugu irrigation scheme is a billion dollars, so it's not cheap. But what is cheap and can be effective is helping smallholders using the same two uh, 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 rainfall patterns that we've had since time immemorial to improve upon the work that they are doing. That we can 
we could afford, at least in the six years, we were able to subsidize, and, and then the application of these things went up substantially. I mean, when we came in 2017, only 2,200 metric tons of improved seed of the five ones, maize, Siri, and, and the others, were applied. By the time I left the ministry last year, it had gone to over for, uh, nearly 50,000 metric tons of improved seed alone. And each of these, you know, is meant to help the farmer to increase production on their little farms. And we are talking about three, over three million farmers. So if every one of them is to improve even 5%, you can see the aggregate, okay? Instead of saying one billion in one location, you are spread it amongst a lot of people and transforming their lives in their villages and so on. Now, Dr. Oshafi Akoto, in the video you just watched, revealed that uh, with improved seed varieties, Ghana can make strides with its farming output as against the effort to construct, to construct dams. According to him, comparing the expensive nature of constructing dams makes economic sense for a developing country like Ghana to rely on the use of improved seed varieties than to rely on dams. But the Peasant Farmers Association of Ghana vehemently disagrees with him. Joining us uh, via Zoom is Dr. Charles Nyaba, uh, who is the Executive Director of the Association. Grateful to you, sir, for joining us. Uh, first, your reaction to this assertion by the, the former minister that, look, instead of worrying about expensive dams, the use of improved varieties can do the magic for us. Hello, Doc. Kindly unmute so we can follow what you're telling us, sir. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now, sir. Okay. Uh, okay, so we are actually disappointed that this statement is coming from him when he's the very person who is talking about modernization of agriculture. You cannot modernize agriculture without water. And we all know that uh, for the past uh, one decade, the raining pattern has changed drastically. Mm. So you go to almost all the existing regions of Ghana and farmers cannot rely on the rainfall to do meaningful farming. Because in terms of volumes, it has reduced drastically. In terms of patterns, it has changed drastically. In terms of length of rainfall, it has changed. So we cannot continue to say that because our forefathers used to rely on rainfall for agriculture, we continue to do that. Even if you talk of uh, using hybrid seeds, you cannot get meaningful yields with the hybrid seeds when there is drought. And that's what the minister should, 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 should take notice of. Mm. And when you take all the countries that develop through agriculture, mm -hmm. let's use uh, um, the United um, States. Israel. Yeah, let's take Israel for example. Okay. Israel grew their agriculture sector through development of their irrigation system. They were able to convert even the seawater into agriculture water. You take a go to Egypt, they use the Nile River mm. to actually develop the agriculture sector. You go to China, you go to every community in China, there is a irrigation. You go to India, the same thing. Libya, Libya during the Gaddafi, Gaddafi regime was doing the same. Yes. So even when you go to the desert uh, uh, nations, they are changing the space of agriculture through irrigation. And it was the same concept that the MPP government, when they were coming to power 2016, they sold to us and all bought into it, that they were going to introduce this one village, one that, which is a fantastic uh, conceptualization that they were introducing. The only problem we have with the one village, one dam, has to do with the way it was implemented. It was poorly implemented. There was no proper consultation. They didn't use people with expertise to do the, the construction. And that led to the failure of one village, one dam. Mm -hmm. So for the minister to now come and say that and try to make a wrong comparison by using a Mercedes Benz and Trotter, it doesn't match. If you use that example, it means that uh, uh, irrigation is a luxury because Mercedes Benz is a luxury car. Mm -hmm. so irrigation is not luxury because without irrigation, you cannot farm. So, to me, I think I'm not downplaying the importance of hybrid seeds or improved seeds because we are using it. 
but I think that you cannot grow your agriculture with hybrid seeds without proper irrigation system. Mm. And ir irrigation system is what we are pushing for. Uh, well, but, but in one breath, if, say, with, with irrigation or with the normal rainfall we do have, you are getting one uh, or ten kilos per bag of maize per acre. And with his analogy, he says with improved seeds, you can make, say, uh, you know, 50 bags of 10 kilos per acre. That's an improvement over the previous. And, and that should be something that is worth investing into, isn't it? Yeah, so just like I said earlier, I'm not downplaying the importance of using improved seeds. And let's look at the over the years, how much has government invested in improved seeds? This year, as we speak, there's no subsidies on improved seeds. Mm. And I can tell for a fact that farmers are already using their own money to buy improved seeds without government subsidy. Okay? The irrigation infrastructure is so huge that no farmer will be able to create his own irrigation without government intervention. Mm. So mm. if he's even saying that we are setting the investment on subsidy on improved seeds, to support irrigation infrastructure is something that we all welcome. If you even speak to seed growers, they will tell you the reason why they are not able to produce proper seeds in Ghana is lack of irrigation facilities. And they are all pushing that if we should adopt improved seed system, then we need to improve on irrigation infrastructure. Most of the improved seeds that we are using, and those seeds are not part of the seeds that government has subsidized. Those seeds that government subsidized are the OPVs and so few hybrid seeds. And those seeds, farmers, the demand for them from farmers is less. Okay. Most of the farmers are buying the quality improved seeds that are imported. So if you actually want farmers to adopt improved seeds or want to improve uh, supply of improved seeds in the country, what we need to do is to create enabling infrastructure for seed growers to be able to grow. And irrigation is one of the key infrastructure that we need to be able to produce um, quality improved seeds. Mm. So to me, I don't disagree with him. I don't agree with him. And I don't think there's any farmer who support this analogy that he's making. Mm. With the irrigation system that we do have in place now, um, how are they are utilization like? Are we putting them to good new, uh, good use or just like we do and in the past we've had irrigation systems that have really gone bad because we didn't manage them well currently with the one that we with the ones that we have how are they now yeah so to buttress my point if you look at the areas where we have high mm. yields farmers are recording profitability in their production with the irrigation the few irrigation facilities that we have you can talk of the pump irrigation scheme Go there and see the farmers who are producing rice and other vegetables, both rainy season and dry season. Go to tunnel irrigation areas. That is where we are getting most of our seeds for, uh, uh, for, 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 to supply to other farmers. We do a lot of rice season there. Go to K2, uh, the irrigation project there. The same thing. So almost all the few irrigation areas that we have in Ghana are where we are getting good yields from. Now, the same government has introduced this economic enclave project. And when you go there, the president just launched that project last month. You go to those areas, they are creating different types of irrigation. They are creating canals and other things to ensure that there is available water for farmers who want to actually go there to expand their production to do. So if government, the same government is doing this, and then a, a former minister of Madrid, who Unfortunate situation there. Well, so we're speaking to Dr. Charles Inaba, who is executive director for Peace and Farmers Association. Yeah, Doc, your line is okay now. You're making a point about the, the former minister who is going contrary to what the, the, the government is doing. Yeah, as I said recently, the government is investing hugely mm. on the construction of these uh, economic entry projects, where they are creating irrigation. They are actually tapping water from the rivers and then creating canal for farmers to be able to produce. So if government is investing like this, and a former immediate class agric minister is now coming to downplay importance of irrigation and comparing that to hybrid seeds, I mean to improve seeds, uh, I, I, I'm really surprised. Mm. And I don't think uh, his own government is going to be happy 
with this uh, uh, information that you put out there. Okay. Um, you mentioned that, that there's been poor implementation of the one village, one dam policy. Uh, what must we do to that policy going forward? We have invested money. We have not really derived the benefit. What should we do as a country? Yeah, I think we have assessed almost all the dams under the one village, one dam. There are some that can be repaired. Uh, we presented a, a report, a comprehensive report, uh, which contains recommendations that government need to take in going forward. Mm. So those that were fully constructed and then can be repaired, recommended that government pay attention to them and allocate resources to rework on them. There are others that where the dams are even treated, it's not waterway. So when it rains, the dams doesn't get enough water. Mm. Those dams, there are not, there's nothing we can do uh, about them. And uh, we also realize that those contractors that they use for construction of the dam, they didn't have the expertise in dam contracts, uh, con 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 contraction. So we recommend that the government re-engage uh, JIDA, Ghana Irrigation Development Authority, who are known to be in charge of all public and private irrigation development in the country. But during the one village, one dam, they were all ignored. So we recommended to government to hand over all the dams to JIDA, uh, who are mandated by law to actually do that, who also have engineers who are capable of doing that, to take over the one village, one dam. And I'm thinking that when we do that and we do proper designs and select mm. those dams that can be repaired, and then we put them together to have some, some, some at least uh, reasonable dams within a, a district, that will help. So I think when we do that, it is a way forward. Okay. How many dams have been constructed? How many cannot be repaired at all? according to your study? Yeah, I think I, I need to make a reference to my uh, report. Uh, state report, but I know the government targeted 516 dams, but to give you the specifics, I didn't know we we're going to discuss that, so I have to look in there and be able to give you the specific uh, dams, okay. those that are usable, those that are not usable, mm -hmm. and then those that we think that uh, we need to just close them and then make them to get a, a reasonable dam. Okay, grateful to you, but sorry for the ambush there. <laughs> I didn't know I was going to ambush you with this, but, but I'm grateful for you joining us, Dr. Charles Nyaba. He mm -hmm. is Executive Director for the Association of Peasant Farmers.